this is Pat Clubin and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's the weekly show. Paul again, I think you recognise him by now a couple of times. Enjoying the weather. We've Say hello to the two camera. cameras now. Say so, yeah, technology boys, technology boys. We've got IGTV, we've got YouTube and everything <laughs> what else. More could it, what more could you guys want? And uh, keep the subs going, they've been banging in the last couple of days, so it's, it's yeah. good to see your phones have been hopping with notifications yeah. all, all day. So Twitter followers are going up, uh, Instagram, <laughs> going everything. Up. YouTube is going up, the work today, so it's flying. Um, keep it going. Let, 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 let's just uh, kick it off then, Will. It's a bit strange at the moment, um, the way the league is kind of distorted with European football, etc, etc. So fixtures are kind of coming a bit all over the place, really. You're, yeah. you're kind of double-checking the fixtures quite a lot just to try, because games are on, then they're off, or, you know, it depending on... Another well, delayed uh, on. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. And, st and stuff like that. So, um, Monday, <laughs> we're <laughs> greatest league in the world. I have to actually, before we start, poor old uh, Keith Ward uh, doing a delivery outside his uh, football stadium the other day. Wasn't really a good morning, to, a good start to the morning. I'm sure everybody has seen it by now, but he anyone, took it well. So he did, he did, Bordy, he, fair play, <laughs> fair play, to, yeah, yeah. And he even took a little piss take on the Carrius um, Instagram post as well. <laughs> you know, if hate, if you hate anyone in this world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for anyone that hasn't seen it, um, uh, Daily Mount is quite a narrow little alleyway. B both sides actually yeah. coming down to it, and he was, I think, he was doing a delivery, and it's like a big, uh, big transit, Fear. yeah. Fear. Yeah, so into but, the bar. Yeah, and so it was a combination of getting stuck in the narrow little alleyway and locking his keys in. So that was a yeah double whammy. Yeah, the greatest league in the world. That's it, that's it. <laughs> but I know it's like straight back to the to the action. I really world. don't like that term, like the greatest league in the world. I mean, it's yeah, serious piss take. It's a bit of a piss take. It's always a bit of a piss take for me, I have to say. But yeah, look, if people want to go with it, they let, let them yeah. off. Yeah. So Monday, it was a bit, as I said, it's a bit strange with the fixtures, etc. Uh, Derry went down to Cork. Serious victory. And Cork set down a little marker, didn't they? Five nil victory. Um, yeah, what can you say? Statement one point behind. Uh, yeah, but the dock now another the game in hand, or the dock of a game in hand. But you know, points on the table are always more important. Good win. The, the key thing was they bounced back as well after after uh, the leggy game as well. Mm -hmm. Um, they went out and made a good account of themselves over the space of the two legs. From what I've seen, um, you know. Uh, it's one of those things. They, if they had taken their chances, maybe in the, in the in the home leg, I know McNamee could have scored and stuff like that. But if they had taken their chances, who knows um, where they could have kind of ended up. But I think it's a it's a learning curve. A lot of that Cork team are very young now. <laughs> They're bringing in a lot of like good players. Sean McLaughlin, obviously Sadler, uh, McNamee. Um, there's a good there's a good kind of quarter, and obviously got the De, um Delaney coming in now. Yeah, and he scored as well. His debut goal. Yeah, him. against um and Keown as well. Keown and Colan, but two for Buckley as well. So a nice spread of goals there as well. Um, yeah, it's it's a statement. It was that reaction, and actually judging by the the way the game went this evening, Celtic three one victory, after going one 0 down against Rosenberg in the first leg of that. So that looks like a Cork Rosenberg. We're not going to get the dream tie, doesn't unless Celtic fall apart on the. In the in the second leg now, but it looks like that European adventure is going to go on with Rosenberg down Turns Cross, which is still going to be a great great night down there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, European football is European football, and um, the longer the teams in uh in in Ireland are in it, the better for everyone uh, involved in Irish football in any way, shape, or form. And the sooner people in Ireland realise that and get down and support the teams, the better because, um. You know, how the people want our, our national team to do well, but yet they don't come to our, to our, not, our, our domestic league, and they don't want us. They, they think it's shit and they they bad mouth it and all. But the 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 reality is they're playing European football. Yeah. They're playing against top players, and you know if more people went to support them and drove them, they might do what. Well, it's more you know? gate receipts from the gate, etc. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring it up, but now that you're kind of led on to it, I'll, I'll go on a mini rant. So we were at the uh, Pats uh, Newcastle friendly. I've never seen Richmond as packed in years. It was jammed like so much to so that there was people. We were in the press box and there was people like standing on the alleyways, blocking a load of <laughs> your view. All yeah. that's how that's how packed it was. Now I know there was a, a, a quite a large Newcastle support as well, but there was a lot of Irish people there as well. But. You just don't see that week in, week out down in down in Richmond, do you? And that's a sad state of affairs, really, isn't it? Yeah, but look, it's one of those things. When the Premier League team comes to town, you'll <laughs> see it again in next week when Ch Chelsea and Arsenal come yeah, to true. town. That uh, people want to go and see the Premiership because it's there, it's in your face. And the problem is there's not enough advertising, there's not enough, uh, you know, promotion of the league out there. And and credit like uh, teams are starting to realise that there's likes of Rovers, Pats, Dundalk. Mm -hmm. 
um, Cork they're starting to push it out there that little bit more so I think I think in, in actual fact although Bray and Limerick are acting, acting bollocks in terms of their payments and stuff like that there is um, and Waterford as well there is a, an increase in gate receipts and there is an increase in, in crowds it certainly was from the start of the season um, I do believe that we're going the right direction but it needs to be consistent it, it promotion does, yeah. it I doesn't have... need to be oh there's a game in three weeks we've got to promote it's mm-hmm. going to be every week you got to be pushing it out there I have to say the you, you mentioned it there, but the Rovers social media really upped their game in the last couple of weeks. There's some brilliant, you know, clips of fans and it just, you know, catches the raw emotion. I think you, you see like an older guy and he, he he stood there and you can see him just it's almost in slow motion as the goal has happened and then he goes crazy and it's it's something like, you know, can't be being there or something along those lines. But really, really catching and it's it's great to see because yeah, look, I know I know we need to fund it and and all that, but you know, the more the clubs can can expose themselves and, you know, push a few more drag a few more people in and hopefully once people get down there to games they'll appreciate you know just how good it and how, how lucky we are to have such a good league on a doorstep speaking of European football though team kind of on that borderline really really hanging on is, is Waterford bad result against Rovers there great uh, result for Rovers though. great result for Rovers yes but yeah um, I saw also seen um, I actually didn't get to see that game on Soccer Holy but I did see Courtney Doofus complaining on uh, yeah. Twitter he's quite vocal on Twitter wasn't um, he about a penalty that should have mm-hmm. been given, mm-hmm. and apparently he was, uh, I don't know, they were making out that he made a meal of it or something along those lines. <laughs> um, so he was not a happy bunny. No, he wasn't. And I heard a couple of other load of well, not a load, but a couple of water people I've been speaking to as well didn't seem very happy about that decision. So any water fans, you know, give us your comments here. <laughs> Tell us what you really feel about about that incident. But I suppose it's almost the feel good story really with uh, with, with Shaw. Like I believe if you, if the rumors are true and you take them out. Of t- Pinch of salt and all that. He was told maybe he could start looking elsewhere, but he said no. I want to stay and fight. He's spot. meant to go to Clinton. That's right, and the, the move kind of seemed to drop down in the eleventh hour, or whatever. But he scores the winners there. That's a you know it's a real, real one way of you know a- answering your critics really, isn't it? And and showing people the quality that he has. Yeah, especially when Dan Carr was in the form mm-hmm. he was in as well. So it it kind of goes to show it's like look, I'm here. But then again, when they need someone to come in and kind of fill Graham Burke's shoes, he might be the person to do it. Who knows? Um. He was so he was injured uh, for for a little bit I think and he was kind of struggling. Actually, I think the last time I seen him was against Waterford at home and he struggled that game. Yeah, I think it was one one. Um, yeah. and he struggled that game. It was actually the night we interviewed Graham Burke. That's right. Yeah. So um and Gavin Houlihan I think scored keeper was at fault that night, but uh, I think he play, he he played that game and he just struggled. Um, so you know I hopefully for his own sake he can kind of get a run of games and a run of goals and. You know, it looks it looks as though Rovers are getting the momentum in their swing now since Burke left, which is kind of strange. But I yeah, mean, no, they won't be complaining. Obviously, they got um they got Alan Manis back now mm-hmm. as well. So apparently, he was brilliant as well. Yeah, he made a good yeah, few saves. yeah. So yeah, it's a real as you said. You can look at it both ways, really, from a water point, Waterford point of view, being at home. If you're trying to push on to European football, it's a it's a disappointing result. But on the flip side, massive massive result for Rovers. And we as we said, you know, we seem to be re- repeating ourselves quite a lot with Rovers. They really have turned things around, and that positivity is is back among the club. Another now. clean sheet. Yeah, another clean sheet, and they're marching up the table again. Uh, onto the Friday. Half of them, two bad goals, two two really good goals. <laughs> Gavin Bazuna and Alan. Yeah, no, I think it's a bit of a thigh injury there, whatever. But he'll be back as well. And actually, speaking of Gav, it's it's good to uh, the again. So the, the so the the reports I read was that he's. He's t- or he's committed to the club till until he finishes his leaving cert, which I think is a wonderful move for him as well. Like yeah. I think he's he's got your education in case yeah. anything, um, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But even just to, to to grow his game uh, and to learn the game, learn his trade. There's no better place than Rovers at the moment there. And you know what the funny thing is is just uh, in the, in, the, in the in the last while. You know, I've been speaking to a lot of Liverpool reporters the last week, and they've been speaking about him. You know, oh, he he hasn't been, he's going to stay put for a while. We're not going to see him, sign him for a while. That move may not happen, but it's it's a real indication of how things have come. So, uh, onto the the Friday night games. Then, um, Pat's left it late, made a bit of a a meal out. Well, not a meal out of it, but Limerick got an early goal. Um, Dini scored against his old club. I would have loved to have seen that celebration. I'm sh- I've seen him play earlier on this season at Richmond, and. The, Shall we say there was a few choice words being exchanged between fans, managers, coach and staff. Yeah. And anybody else. Not a happy boy. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> anybody else that he could get, they could get hold of. It was it was quite amusing actually. But yeah, I say that celebration was brilliant. Um, but then Pat's left it late. I was you know kind of following the game and I was like, oh god, this is going to be a disaster of a result really. 
But uh, Colin Byrne rescues the day with two late goals. Um, and uh, a ma you know, I know speaking to speaking to a mate of mine, Will in, in work here. I think it's been an incredible amount of time since Pats had last won a game of football, uh, and to to win it in the way they did, I'm sure sure they're absolutely delighted. But it's uh, still a massive three points for them, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they uh, and we've been kind of saying that they've been playing well in games. They just haven't been getting the goals that they kind of have warranted in games. They just have lacked that kind of killer edge. And obviously, Colin Brown um, seemed to get. I you know, think he scored a penalty, and then it was um, a nice strike then mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and uh, the the one thing to know note as well is, you know, we've seen a lot of pats recently. Just the way the games have fallen, um, the always feels like you know the luck isn't there. They haven't been getting the rub of the green, and by all accounts, this is coming from the pat supporters. There was a they had Limerick had a very dodgy offside uh, call uh, against them late on, um. So pats probably got a probably well deserved rub of the green, but um. Yeah, massive three points really. That that would have been, you know, it would have been really a disaster if they'd lost three points there. You know, they'd yeah. almost suck back down to the to that dogfight with Limerick. They're just a little bit ahead of them now and if Pat's if Pat's gonna improve their their away form and start winning more games at home, I don't see any reason why they can't get a European place. Yeah, they're probably a bit off now. I think they'll need to, to put Yeah, they'll, they'll probably, probably finish mid table. But yeah. if they if they kinda of kick down a bit, they've got good players they and definitely stuff. have the potential there, don't they? Yeah. I think if they don't, I think next season they'll be very good. You'd like to think that you know they're building something, just get the foundations yeah. in place for next season. But uh, onto the other kind of a, almost a similar type of game, really. Bowes uh, at home to Bray, another game that they expected to win, and they. Dan O'Kelly against his former club. Yeah, it doesn't take long, really. A follower the of the show as well. <laughs> you know, could it get any better for the guy? Um, two goals, um, six nil. Will ah, uh, sorry, six nil win even. Um, they you probably, can't get Will after mine. No, yeah, everyone loves a bit of Will, don't they? <laughs> uh, Will Moore and all that. But um, <laughs> back back to the uh, that's a joke and work. You probably <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. No, moving swiftly onwards. Uh, he that far out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's staying in, folks. Yeah, no, no. It's it's a win that they 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 wanted and they needed. Yeah, uh, look, six nil. I heard it could have been eleven. Um, Look, I don't blame blame the Bray, uh, Bray players. You know, it seems they just turned up and were like, "All right, let's just get on with it." I don't say they have any confidence at all at the moment because of what's going on. It's um, it's a total mockery. Uh, and look, happy for Bose. As I mm -hmm. say, I always enjoy going down there. Um, get a good reception off the fans and stuff like that. So I'm happy for them. They got to win. Bray I just don't even know where they're going. Um. So I, yeah. I think the less said about them, the better, because it just yeah. everyone's gone on about them at this point. I just don't see the point in us even. Yeah, no, look, they've bigger problems than losing three points here, and it, it it's the players at the end of the day that I feel really, really bad for. Mm. They've they've been put a putting a stone down effort in the whole time, and I have to say as well, I've played to Bluebell as well. You know, really nice touch inviting the players in to use their facilities. Yeah. And again, they're a nice bunch of lads as well. Absolutely. Obviously, I was down interviewing Tom Boyd, and they have been down there a couple of times. Now, they're very um, accommodating to me as well. You know, so. Fair play, lads. Great bunch of lads. I suppose we've kind of touched on it there a little bit, but um, the news broke today then that the FEI, or so the FEI board, have made a, a three three hundred thousand. Well, just wanted to talk about one thing about Pat Hoven. They say he doesn't score in Europe. Hader, Hader is going to say it's fake. He uh, he scores an incredible <laughs> header. Yeah, it's good and finish. Michael Duffy. What a screamer! With that Matt Van Basten ping. Yeah, I think yeah, I can't. I can't believe you weren't going to mention that. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I knew you were going to have you know hashtag call it Pat <laughs> and all that. No, but it was just people saying that he had to do it in Europe and all. So he's 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 one step. He's done it. He's done everything that everyone said he can't do this season. He's, he's done it so far. <laughs> so people are going to keep on saying he can't do things and he's yeah. He's okay, well let, let's speak about Dundalk a little, a little bit. Then we'll talk about that fund and all that boring stuff towards the end. Um, great to see. I think it was Sunday morning. I think if I remember right the. The, the tickets were on sale for the home leg. Yeah, serious um, crowd. Queue literally out the gap. I think they could have from eleven. Yeah. A.M. Yeah, re and re like even I saw someone tweeting. I think from about nine o'clock. Those huge queues. Um, it by all accounts they could have they could have sold another two or three uh, times the tickets. Um, that's you know we, we touched on maybe earlier where Richmond, you know the 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 getting a crowd for a for a friendly against Newcastle and struggling for league games. It's everyone seems to be involved and come on the town hey and <laughs> and all that. But um. 
yeah, no, gr- great to see so much. You know, we take the piss with the local slang or whatever, but great to see. Ah, they love it. Yeah, they do. Really. Same with the cocks, like, come on, the rebels. <laughs> no, but g- great to see so much of a community spirit, and you know, everyone a real sense. I know it helps to the playing great football and it's a European game. It is, but... It's that thing with Dundalk and Cork and these things. Because there's so many teams in Dublin that you don't see it, but it's, it's they get behind their teams. You walk around Dundalk, and I'd be up there a good bit. They walk around with their Dundalk, you know, their uh, yeah. their jerseys and their tracksuits and everything else. They've got nice gear. And uh, it's the same in Cork. I'm, I, I'm sure. And yeah, even, even Liam Nielsen, I saw him there sporting his. Tra- yeah. He's top. He's very dodgy in that. Uh, he does. Yeah. I will find you. And I yeah. will kill you and all that. But no, um, I'm probably going to end up at the Dundalk game on Sunday myself. Um, I think they're playing Bows, but I'm going to end up at that myself. I think on Sunday. So Dundalk fans, if you see us, uh, come over say hello. Uh, I'm sure we get an interview with you or whatever if you want. So absolutely, yeah, and you know. It's how do you fancy your chances of getting through this leg and home leg at Oriel? You know, pr- probably. I think, I think they can be confident. They're playing the best football in the country at the minute. Um, they look solid in most areas. Um, you know, they're scoring goals. They're playing good football. Um, confidence is very very high yeah, in the, in the camp, and they're scoring from all types of areas. Duffy, Connolly, Benson, uh, Huben. You know, and uh, adores you and you know the so, goals are coming from everywhere. New, signed a new deal as well, apparently. You know, he's the, signing. I think he's got eight days left of his loan. He's yeah, due to sign full time. Another another great move. You know, he's yeah. a player that was struggling. It's, it's he's you know I, I love him. The finish that he did against Cork oh, yeah. was just incredible from the left side of the box. Yeah. He's a top just, player. Just, All the players said it. Like he spoke to yeah. Dane Massey and yeah. a couple of others, and they, just they he's said like class, isn't he? Yeah, I, I hope that he's been able to take a challenge since they said he couldn't take a challenge. But anyway, um, do you want to talk? You wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, well, I suppose just to round up the dock, it looks like, judging by the results are going as well, that's if they can get through Touchwood and all that, it'll be Sturm Graz that they'll, they'll be playing yeah, in the they're next well, round. They're well beatable. And well, well set. So, right, that's the exciting stuff. Um, we've got to run through the this week's distorted league games and a couple of European football adventures as well. Uh, onto the Bournes, Dutch, I think I kind of touched on it slightly there. Yeah, um, the FAI board have have announced today that there's going to be three hundred thousand fund or whatever we would what we want to call it. That's going to be split between the FAI and the PFAI, and um, for clubs pretty much that go belly up and as a last resort to struggle and to pay their players. Yeah, it's a good move by the FAI. And the weirdest thing was, was we had it up on our Facebook earlier, and people were going John Delaney out. It's like he's surely the one that. that yeah, no, John. John seems to get a, a, an unmerciful bashing of the best. Oh, he does, times. but you know, it's it's, it's, an easy, it's an easy one to slang. Everyone slags the one at the top or whatever. But yeah, no, look, they, they, you know, people will say you know this should have been done before, and people will go on about how to break it a license this year, etc., etc. I don't really want to get into that. It happened. Yeah, the floodlights up in Finn Harps and the rest. Yeah, exactly, etc., etc., etc. Look, we got to take this as a, as a positive move, really. Like, there's something being done about about a horrible situation. Yeah. And if it, you know, if it helps, it I means the players get paid. At the end of the day, that's all that matters, really, yeah. isn't it? These are the play- people we go to watch every week. Yeah, and uh, let, let's hope that and the, livelihoods. You yeah, know? Th- let's hope that this fund won't be needed, but it's a good safety net if if, yeah. if required. Yeah. So just to round up the rest of the kind of the breaking news and the rest of the news from from the league and the. The whole Irish scene, uh, really. Uh, two more bits of news. One is that Eamon Dunphy is going to be retiring as his role as football analyst for RT. Um, forty years. Forty years is a long time. Um, yeah, he wants to focus on his his podcast a bit. He's got two point three three million views, baby. So, who knows? He could even end he up says he's putting all his energy in into this. What are you gonna say? Who knows? He could be here one day. You know, he might be looking off. Little you know, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like um. You know, whatever you want to say about Dunphy is decisive figure amongst controversial. Footballs. Definitely, uh, how do I ask Rod Diddle? <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, like the things that come to mind straight away is obviously the Kane thing. I always remember the Venables rant that he went on as well. He pretty much stopped Venables. Ronaldo get, is get, a fad. Yeah, and he called him everything. Cod. Cod and everything under the sun. Um, Where's Hulin? Is veteran. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is like his best moments right here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we've missed the moment, let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, you know, between you know being tired and emotional on air and having to be removed, that's another one that comes to mind. The camera, the Cameroon short in two thousand and two. Um, yeah, there's been like whatever you want to say about him, he's been decisive. He's he, funny though. He probably brought like how how would I describe him personally? I was a massive fan about ten years ago. 
I thought he was, you know, exceptionally well at a football knowledge. I thought he was obviously very controversial. You could li- one of the things you could you'd watch about that show is they could literally come out with anything. And I remember even soon as the time when he first moved over and started doing pundit work for for RT, he was like, Jesus, I can't believe the guys are saying this. They're so on uh, so honest compared to some of the usual dribble that you hear a lot of fun, but football pundits saying. But I do think the last couple of years his knowledge and has been deteriorated, and you'd question some of the some of the things whether how much football he. He He's has watching, watched, yeah. and you know it's like Anathan. I think, I think, I think, being respectful. I think he's had a great career, and probably now's the time for for everyone to, yeah, to move. Yeah, I on. mean, I wish him well. Absolutely, you know, I'm not yeah. really, I don't really care. Yeah, well, look, most games we're we're at, I know, so we don't really watch the. the yeah, the so I mean, the, I, the, I, the I, I, so. he was funny over yeah. the World Cup, but I don't really care. We're gonna, we're going to take his job. So, <laughs> You've heard it here for, first, and then the last bit of news, just to wrap it up, is the FAI announced the new away kit. <laughs> available a little uh, soon on the link tomorrow morning tomorrow morning yeah um, available on the link uh, we'll, 9am we'll, FAI shop we'll, we'll share out the link again I think it's it's ready to be available on all social media platforms it's um, a new white kit obviously the three similar look, it's similar to that yeah with, with a nice bit of a I like the colour yeah um, who knows we may even do a competition on yeah who knows yeah um, make sure you're a subscriber though yeah absolutely that's the, that's the one little bit of clause Um it's a, it's a kit it doesn't really get me that it's excited. a nice kit McLean models it well on our Instagram which has a thousand likes plus that, in three hours that did well today yeah so uh, pretty tough for that so James McLean loves a new away kit yeah he does uh, and so does uh, most of the people that comment on it True. Uh, let us know your thoughts on the uh, away kit in the comments uh, a lot of people don't like it with the three on it and I agree with you guys uh, we're like yeah, the only but it's team. sponsorship though at the end of the day isn't it yeah but we're, we're the only national team that don't have uh, or sorry, that do have a sponsor, uh, sponsor on a kit, and it's just it's it's annoying because a lot of people want to buy it with just you know without with just the crest. Uh, and similar to this, you buy you want to buy one of these, <laughs> you buy one of these. Um, but you know what I mean. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's one of those things. No, I can um, see, I can see, I can see. A lot of fans are unhappy about, about the yeah. three logo, but that's nothing to do with us. Um, sponsorship yeah. and all that. Um, you reminded me of one piece of news there as well. McLean has moved to Stoke. Um, the last couple of days as well. Mm. I think it's a good move for him. It's funny, isn't it? Because they wear the dairy colours. He liked my comment when I wrote him down candy stripes. <laughs> as well. So he, I think he, there's something there. Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. And uh, I think that's all the news, unless I forgot anything. Anything I have forgotten, remind us in the comments. Yeah. Um, Paul, any more Yeah, uh, don't forget to <laughs> like, subscribe. Um, you if you thought this video was good, give it a share. And uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. I mean, we're constantly asking every week for people to write in the comments, and you don't, but just write on our Instagram. Look, if you write on the Instagram, that's cool as well. So, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon, and thanks for watching.